I'm going to be doing a few 3D printing videos from time to time. So if you aren't into that sort of thing, just don't watch them. But I've learned a lot about it and I'd like to share some of the stuff I've learned about it and some of the little tricks that I figured out along the way. This first one will be about making a cleaner Z seam. Most 3D prints will have a Z seam of some sort unless you're using vase mode. This is just a little cheat that you can use to get a cleaner looking Z seam. And it, it also helps with the sidewall straightness. I think you get a little bit of a compounding error sometimes when you're making a Z seam, especially on circular shapes that can affect the sidewalls. So the shape I have here is just a, a cylinder with a hole through it and the hole is tapered or flared. It's a bowling ball cup, both of my kids bowl and they use these bowling ball cups to keep them from rolling around when there's not room on the rack. They might wanna sit on a table or something. I exported the STL file and I'll open it up in Cura and I will go ahead and slice this. You'll see that the Z seam retraction points kind of bounce back and forth a little bit and they're on the inside and the outside walls because this is kind of a ring shaped object. So this print will take about an hour and 18 minutes to print. This is just a functional print. I'm using thick lines and thick layers and these will be printed in PETG and this will print fine. It's just a functional print. The looks of it, I'm not so concerned about. The inside tapered area having the Z seam like it does, it kind of sticks out a little bit. And sometimes when you're cleaning a bowling ball and it's on one of these ball cups, you need to be able to rotate the ball on the cup while you're cleaning it. And it kind of hinders that a little bit. A smoother seam right there would help some with that. So this is a good candidate for this little hack I'm going to show you right here and I'll be able to print off a ball cup done each way and show you the differences between the two. All I'm going to do here is cut a thin slice out of this model. I'm using 0 0.03 millimeters so it's extremely thin and I'm going to slice that out of the model and re-export it and open it up in Cure and show you what happens now to the Z seam. It might seem like that would weaken your print. The slice is so thin that the two sides will still bond to each other. The nozzle kind of overlaps just a little bit there at that really thin seam line and the two sides of the print actually still bond together. And it really works well with PETG because PETG sticks to itself so well when it's hot. It's hard to see in the preview here where that slice is going to be but after I slice it I'll open up the preview mode and show you how the perimeters will now wrap around instead of stopping and starting so often it'll wrap around and only stop and start on the seam on the outside and it all lines up a whole lot better because there's an actual corner there for the software to pick up on in order to put the Z seam in that exact location. As you can see there's a lot fewer retractions where it's stopping and starting the print and they're all on the outside. When I back down through the layers here you can see that perimeters are wrapping around each other. They meet at that seam and there's enough of an overlap there when it's actually printing that it all sticks together just fine. It's one solid piece. Now let's take a look at the ball cup that was printed without using the hack. The Z seam doesn't look all that bad on the outside. It gets a little crazier on the inside, especially in that tapered area where it starts bouncing around a little bit more back and forth in, in different spots. But there is kind of a compounding effect and it affects the outside walls pretty noticeably and it probably does the same thing on the inside it's just a little harder to see it because it's on the inside than it is the outside walls there's just kind of a compounding error there where those retractions are taking place in different areas the layers kind of get a little out of whack some of that could be in my printer, but I use the same printer to print this both ways. And we go back and look at the two prints, you'll see some noticeable differences in the Z seams. And there's also a difference on the exterior walls. You can really see 
and because these were printed on the same printer, I would think for the most part, whatever errors you get would be duplicated. So I think part of the problem is the way that these retractions are pretty much doubled in number doing it the normal way. There's about half as many retractions using this hack that helps somewhat, you would think, in the way that it stacks the exterior and interior perimeter on top of each other. Fewer retractions should be a good thing. There's a little bit less of a blob. You're cutting those in half. At any rate, it definitely looks a whole lot better. And I've used this little trick on some other prints that I've done too, and it works pretty well every time. I found you don't really need it as much on square shapes because you can usually get your Z seams to fall out pretty good on your corners. But it's just something to keep in mind if you ever run across a situation where you think you might need to use this little tip here. It might come in handy for you and I just thought I'd share it with everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. Y'all take care and I'll talk to you later.